welcome to Bits and Biology. My name's Liz, and today I'm going to show you how to play the one to four player game, Harmonies. Harmonies is a tile laying game designed by Johan Benvenuto and published by Lillibud in 2024. Let's go down to the table and I'll show you how to play Harmonies. Harmonies, players place chunky tokens of different colors to create three-dimensional landscapes made up of diverse habitats in which they will place a variety of animals. The player who earns the most points by placing animals into specific habitats in their landscape is going to win the game. I'm going to first go through the setup and the rules for the multiplayer game and then let you know what's different about the solo game. All right, here we are nearly set up for a two-player game of harmonies. The first thing you're going to do is take this central board here, which has two sides. Uh, one side has five spaces on it, and the other side has three spaces on it. The side with three spaces is for the solo game, and the side with five spaces is for the multiplayer game. For a two-player game, we're going to use the side with five spaces, place that in the center of the table. You put all of the tokens for the game, these chunky colorful tokens, these all go in the linen bag that is supplied with the game. And you're going to fill each of the spaces on the central board with three tokens that you draw randomly from the bag. Next, you're going to shuffle the animal cards and place five of these cards face up within reach of all players. And because I want to show off a little bit of the three-dimensional aspect of this game, I've put the player boards up near the top of our player area, and our market cards or display cards down here below the player boards. You're going to place the animal cubes within reach of all players, and then give each player a personal board. So these personal boards have two sides, side A and side B. Uh, they recommend for your first few games to play with side A, so that's how we're going to set this up. You'll also give each player a scoring card, which also has two sides, one for side A and one for side B. If you're playing with the Nature Spirit cards, you're going to randomly deal each player two Nature Spirit cards. And on each player's first turn, they're going to look at the cards and decide which one they want to keep. I'm going to put, uh, have that player keep that one. Now they would do this on their first turn, but just to sort of keep things neat, I'm going to choose right away. On the Nature Spirit cards, you will place these transparent cubes right up there at the top. And I will go over how the Nature Spirit cards work once I've gone through the multiplayer rules of the game. Next thing you're going to do is to choose a first player and then turn the central board so that it points to the first player. Let's make this player on the right, the first player. So we're going to turn the central board so that it points towards them. That's going to be important when the end of the game is triggered because you will finish the round, once the end of the game is triggered, you will finish the round so that everybody has the same number of turns. And so that's why you need to know who the first player was. There are three possible actions players can take on their turn. One of those actions is mandatory and the other two are optional. And those three actions can be done in any order. The mandatory action each player must do on their turn is to draft a set of three tokens and then place them in their landscape according to placement rules that are specific to each color of token. Those rules are outlined in the rule book on page four in detail and on the back side of the rule book in this player aid graphic in sort of graphical form. A token can always be placed on an empty space on your board. So for instance, if this player drafted these three tokens here, let's say they put their two rivers here. Now they could choose to put the tree up here because of the way their nature spirit card is, and I'll explain again how those work in a moment, I'm going to choose to place that right here. But they don't have to be adjacent to each other. Mountains, these gray tiles here, can be placed on other mountains up to a height of three tokens. Buildings can be placed on one of three different types of token. They can be placed on top of mountain tokens, tree trunk tokens, or other building tokens. Trees can consist of a canopy and either zero 
or one or two trunks. Water and fields, these yellow tokens here, cannot be stacked, so those must stay as a single layer. Tokens cannot be placed under tokens that have already been placed, and tokens cannot be placed on a token that already has an animal cube on it. So for instance, if this player had a mountain on their board and it had an animal tile on it, they could not then stack additional mountain tokens on top of that mountain. When placing tokens on your board, there are two things to consider how tokens on your board will score at the end of the game. And so that is outlined on the scoring card that each player will have next to them. Trees will score one point for just a canopy, three points for one trunk and a canopy, and seven points for a canopy and two trunks. Mountains will score depending on how tall they are, but you will only score mountains as long as they're adjacent to at least one other mountain. If they are solitary, they will not score. And so they score only if they are adjacent to at least one other mountain. Fields, likewise, will only score if they're adjacent to another field. And furthermore, any configuration of two or more field tokens will only score five points. It doesn't matter how many field tokens there are, it'll sc still only score five points. Buildings will score based on the tokens that are placed around them, so you want at least three different colors of tokens, and when you are looking at that, you want to look at the top of the tokens. So for instance, if we're at the end of the game and there was this building here. Even though these are both parts of trees, one is a canopy and one is just a trunk. This trunk, of course, would not score by itself, but when we're talking about scoring the building, it has at least three different colors of tokens around it, and so it would score five points. And then finally, rivers score according to their length. Or I should say water scores according to its length. You only score your longest river and furthermore when you are scoring your rivers you only score the shortest path so for instance this river right here you would count one two three four and you would say it is four long it is not five long because that is not the shortest path for that river and so it's four long and therefore it would score eight points and again, you only score your longest river. All right, so that's one thing you want to think about when you're placing tokens on your board. You also want to think about the configurations of tokens required by your animal cards. So let's talk about that. I said that there were three possible actions that you can take on your turn. The mandatory action is to draft three tokens off of the central board and place them on your personal board. One of the other actions you can do is to take one of the animal cards from the display here. And so, for instance, if, uh, let's say, this player over here wanted to take this penguin animal card, what they're going to do is place it above their board, and then they're going to take three of these animal cubes and place them one, two, three on the card. So this would go above their board, and we would place the three animal cubes on that, like that. Uh, what this wants in order to be able to score points is for the tokens to be in this exact configuration. So for example, if we had a mountain here in between these two water tokens, they would then take the bottommost animal cube off of the card and place it on that mountain. Now, of course, now that this has an animal cube on it, you would not be able to place additional mountain tokens on top of that. It is as tall as it is going to get. You can place an animal cube off of here up to three times. If you place just one, you'll earn four points. If you place two, you'll earn 10 points. And if you place all three, that's worth 16 points. So that's another thing that you want to consider when you are placing tokens onto your board. You may have a maximum of four animal cards above your board, and if you are playing with the Nature Spirit cards, that counts towards your four maximum. 
So like I said, each of these animal cards is going to have this specific habitat pattern that you have to form in order to be able to place animal cubes from that card into your landscape. The required habitat pattern must be recreated exactly on your personal board as it's depicted on the animal card. However, it can be oriented in any direction. So for instance, if this player over here had a tree there, let's put the tree here, and they had these three field or prairie or grassland tokens. Uh, so it doesn't have to be in this orientation, it just has to be in exactly that configuration. So it can be rotated, and in that case you would take one of the two animal tokens off of there and place it on top of the tree. Notice that the height of trees and the height of mountains must exactly match what is shown on the animal card. And when you do place an animal cube from that card, you're always going to choose the bottom most animal cube from the animal card to place into that habitat. You can place multiple animal cubes on a single turn as long as the requirements for each of those have been fulfilled. And furthermore, you don't have to place the animal cube right away. So just because they had just completed that habitat, let's say they were hedging their bets, maybe they had another animal card where they would be placing a cube on that same tree. And so maybe they're waiting to see which one they want to score. So you don't have to place them right away and you can place multiple cubes on a single turn. However, once an animal cube is placed, it cannot be moved. It can't be removed and again, cannot be built on top of. So even though only one cube can be placed on a single token, tokens can be part of multiple habitats. So let's say that this person also had this animal card here and they had a canopy token right there. They've already used this token configuration to place this animal cube here, but now they have also actually, just by placing the one canopy, they're able to place two animal cubes off of this lady beetle card here. So they take the bottom two and place them on the grassland tokens. At the end of your turn, you want to make sure to refill up the central board by replacing the tokens that you took from the bag. And of course, there would only be at most one card missing from the display. So at the end of your turn, if you did take an animal card, you would then replace that. Once all of the animal cubes from an animal card have been placed in your landscape, you would then place that animal card upside down next to your player board. So for instance, if the player on the right had placed another tree and maybe another uh, prairie token there, then they would place that animal cube on that tree. And now this card is finished. They've scored it twice. And this would go upside down next to their player board. And now you'll have room for another card. Again, there's a maximum of four cards that you can have up above your player board. Once you have drawn an animal card and placed it above your player board, you cannot discard it. So if you suddenly figure out that you can't fulfill that animal card, well, that's too bad. It is still taking up space. However, at the end of the game, there is no penalty for having not completed an animal card that you did draft. They do give a tip in the rulebook that for your first few games, it's recommended to not have multiple animal cards above your personal board whose animal cubes are placed on the same color token. And how you would know that is this colored stripe down the right hand edge of the card and also the symbol that is in the bottom right corner of the card. This is a reminder of the color token that the animal cubes are placed on. So try to, at least in your first few games, but in general it's actually a pretty good thing to think about, try not to choose cards where you're placing them on the same token. So for instance, if this individual, if this person over here had these two cards, they're both placing cubes on a single mountain. And so you would have to have uh, four single mountains for this card and three single mountains for that card. And that's gonna be pretty difficult to do. So they would not want to do that. As far as end game triggers, once the token bag is empty, or if at the end of any player's turn, there are two or fewer unoccupied spaces on their personal board, that will trigger the end of the game. At that point, you will finish the round so that all players have the same number of turns. Note that if the player to the right of the first player triggers the end of the game, 
the game ends immediately at the end of that player's turn. The other player would not get, or the other player or players would not get another turn in that case. So make sure you're keeping an eye on other people's boards and keeping in mind that they're drafting three tiles on a turn. So when they get down to, when anybody gets down to five blank spaces on their board, they have the potential of ending the game on their next turn. Once you reach the end of the game, you're going to tally points from animal cards. So for completed animal cards, you would score that topmost number of points. For animal cards that aren't quite complete, you would score the points associated with the topmost uncovered point value. So in this case, for this lady beetle card, that would be five points. And for this penguin card over here, that would be four points. Then you would also score points for the tokens on your player board based on the scoring that I already talked about on the scoring card here. There are clarifications for each of those in detail on pages eight and nine in the rule book, where they'll go into uh, great detail about how these score. Notice that the trees, mountains, fields, and buildings all score the same, no matter which side of the board you're playing on, but that water is going to score differently uh, whether you're playing on side A or side B. All right, let's take a look at the nature spirit cards and see how that works. Let's go back to this player on the left over here and uh, let's say that they have completed the requirements for their nature spirit card. So once those requirements have been met, you would take this translucent cube and place it on the indicated token in the newly created habitat. So in this case, it goes on the water token. And what this means is that now in this top right corner, it has a personal scoring objective. And in this case of this dragonfly nature spirit, it will give seven points for each group of two or more water tokens. So this is actually quite useful because keeping in mind that when you score rivers, you're only scoring for your longest river, but this would allow you to score multiple separated groups of at least two water tokens. Now, keeping in mind that if they're connected, it doesn't matter how many are in the group. There can be five of them in the group and it's still only going to score seven points. So if you're trying to fulfill an objective such as this, you want to make sure that your groups are not connected. Over here for their nature spirit card, they're looking to have a couple of mountains next to each other, one of size two and one of size three. Once they complete that objective, they would take that transparent cube and put it on the indicated token. So in this case, the size three mountain. For this individual now, they're going to score four points for size two mountains. They're also going to score an additional four points for size three mountains. They won't score any additional points for mountains of size one. And so you can see that there are two types of scoring that is available on the nature spirit cards. One scores for groups of tokens and, and the other type scores for specific habitat types. So if we look at the nature spirit cards, we have the ones that score based on having groups of connected landscapes. So this is our lion scores according to grassland habitat. Our tiger swallowtail butterfly is looking for, looks like, well, not really necessarily groups, but any, any grassland habitat is going to score five points, one or more tokens in that habitat. Our stork, there is actually a typo on this stork card. So you can tell this because in the rule book, and this has been discussed on Board Game Geek in the rules forum for this game. And so if you look here and you want to match up the scoring picture with the scoring picture in the rule book, you can see that this should actually be worth six points. So the stork is not worth four points for groups of two or more buildings. It's actually worth six points for groups of two or more buildings. So I don't know. Uh, if you have this game, if you want to make a note of that on your card or just remember that whenever you play the stork. The domestic cat is also go going to score for groups of one or more buildings, uh, four points. We have this, I'm not sure if this is a turtle or a tortoise, but it's next to water, so I'm going to call it a turtle. Uh, this is, now we're getting into the ones that score based on specific habitats. So this will score two points for each river token that you have, water token. 
Uh, the owl will score three points for each tree of size, uh, well, one canopy, each tree that has a trunk and a canopy, and then it'll score one point for each tree that has two trunks and a canopy. This deer, uh, which is a fantastical depiction here with uh, beautiful antlers up top, uh, will score four points for trees of either size two or size three, uh, but not additional points for trees of size one. And this, I think this is a marmot. This marmot is going to score three points for mountains of size one or two and one point for mountains of size three. So they don't like tall mountains, apparently. So those are the nature spirit cards and that's how they score. Now keeping in mind that you only have access to this bonus scoring once you have unlocked it by completing the habitat requirements shown on the cards. So there are 10 different nature spirit cards in the game. All right, and that is how you play Harmonies, the multiplayer game. Let's take a look at how the solo game differs from the multiplayer game. So here we are pretty much set up for a solo game of Harmonies. It's very similar to the multiplayer game. This is a beat your own score mode. And in the solo game, uh, you can play with or without the nature spirit cards, just like in the multiplayer game. You're going to use the solo side of the central board that has just three spaces for tokens. You're going to place three animal cards face up instead of five. Everything else is going to be the same as the multiplayer game. At the end of each turn, so let's say that this person had drafted these, uh, these tokens here, and now there's an empty space on the central board. You don't immediately refill that. You discard the other six tokens off to the side, and then refill the board. If, in the solo game, if you did not take an animal card on your turn, you can choose to discard one of them. So I'm just gonna discard that over there and refill that spot. So that's only if you did not take an animal card on your turn that you can choose one to discard and then refill. All of the other rules remain unchanged, so the way that the end of the game is going to be triggered is if this bag becomes empty or you have two or fewer empty spaces on your board. At that point, the game ends immediately and you go on to end game scoring. Scoring is the same as far as points earned. However, your goal in the solo game is to earn as many suns as possible. So this represents your level of success during the game. And so suns are earned in a few different ways. Uh, the sun scoring system is outlined on page 11. So you can see that you earn a certain number of suns based on your point total. So anywhere from one to eight suns. You'll earn suns based on which side of the board you use. So if you use side A, you'll earn a sun. If you use side B, you don't get any suns for that. And then you'll also earn suns based on whether or not you use nature spirit cards, and if you did, which kind you used. So if you don't use a nature spirit card, that will earn you two suns. If you did earn a nature spirit card, again, there are two different types of nature spirit cards. There are the kind that are based on the number of habitats on your personal board, and there are the kind that are based where scoring is based on groups of connected habitats on your personal board. So if they're based on individual habitats on your personal board, you would earn one sun, and if you instead have these nature spirit cards that are based on groups of connected landscapes or habitats, uh, then you would score zero suns. So I have actually played the solo mode 15 times, I believe. I have played through all of the animal spirit cards and my early games I earned on average six to seven suns and the later games I was getting uh, seven to eight suns and one game I even earned nine suns. So that gives you an indication because they don't unfortunately provide you with a way to tell how, you know how many suns is a good score or not. I will say that somebody on Board Game Geek is currently working on developing a campaign for Harmonies that consists of a series of solo scenarios where you start with a set of three specific cards that you must complete while also meeting a target score. So you, if you're interested in that, you can find it in the files section for the Harmonies game on Board Game Geek. It's titled Melodies, Solo Scenarios. As of this recording, there are 15 solo scenarios that have been developed for Harmonies, but now this is a fan-made solo mode, right? So I'm not gonna go through it here. 
I might create a playthrough video in the future where I play through maybe the first scenario. I don't know if they intend to create more scenarios or if they're just still in development as far as scores and things go, but I know they're still in the works of developing this. And that is how you play harmonies. I'll see you in the next video. Bye! Thank you.